Listen, I've been doing this and this is my um, 10 stitch thing, you know, the one Frankie Brown Ravelry. She's got this where you at any one point you'll be only using 10 stitches on the loom. And um, I think there are a couple of videos, one's done by Amanda Pratt and the other one's by S Charity Winham. You can find them on YouTube. You, I don't have Frankie Brown's permission to reproduce this. And besides, you know, it's a bit of, um, com it's a bit complicated, you know, just the turning bit, you know, the very first part where you turn the corner and then you turn the corner again, you know, and then you go in this direction, you keep on doing it. While you're watching the two videos, I suggest you watch both Charity Wyndham and Amanda Pratt's videos because Amanda Pratt is left-handed, you know. So if you want the right-handed view, but you can use Amanda's uh, way of doing it because she doesn't work the last stitch, you know, when she starts. So, you know, you a little less work and she uses the E-Wrap, unlike the one that Charity does. Charity does it with the unit, you know. But both methods are very nice and you get this um, instructions are also very well done by both of them, you know. So what I intend to do, I just want to tell you this part, you see, because I did about, I want to get a rectangle because I intend to create a shrug. When I finish this, this will be the part that I'll be using. Hang on. And um, I'm going to be using this. like this all right now my my yarn is variegated you know it's the one that has a bit of alpaca in it and it's really nice and warm and lovely and i intend to make a shrug out of this so what i wanted was to get a rectangle you see so i'm hoping to get a rectangle between 38 and 19 or any one of those uh, measurements you see so i had to get this part to be a rectangle so what you have to do when you start, you make sure you cast, um, sorry, you create, because this is the part that decides how long your 10 stitch blanket is going to be. So here you have to make a decision. If you make it nine, you get a square. So what I did was nine meaning nine ridges, you know, that means each ridge is a knit and a pearl. So what you need to do is do about 19 of them and you get, um, I think, a 2 is to 3 ratio, the sides, you know. That means this, if this is a 3, this will be a 2, you know. That's the, the, the ratio of the rectangle that you can get and that would be almost perfect for that shrug. You know, the harvest shrug, I, I put up a video on a uh, mohair shrug that I've done, I'll be making up this shrug exactly like that. And now, once I finish this uh, 10 stitch blanket, I'll show you how I'm gonna sew it up. And um, that's it, it's gonna be a very short video you know, because I'm not really gonna show you how to make the blanket. After you've made the blanket, you can follow the instructions that I'll give for you to create the shrug. And that's it. Okay, what I've done is this um, 10 stitch uh, blanket thing, eh, which I'm going to turn into a shrug. I just wanted to show you how it looks now. We've got like some kind of mitered um, rectangles with the color changing here and there. I think the effect is rather attractive. And um, so what I was thinking, looking at this, is that... Um, the final measurement I'm going to go for is 31 by 29, I think. 31 by 29. That should do it. After you've finished and you've got 31 by 29, you fold it along the longer side, the 31 side, so that you will get 15 and a half. And um, you sew up until you leave an armhole opening of 7 inches. And then you would have completed the shrug. I'll show you once I've taken this off the small loom there. And then we will see and I will show you how to do up the shrug. Okay, I just completed this. 
and my final measurements were 31 by 29 if you want to go uh, have measurements that are larger than that you can you just have to continue doing the 10 stitch uh, spiral you know the mitered corn mitered uh, corners you know and uh, continue with the overall um, length of it you see now where i finished is here this is was my final part this part was my final bit you know this one here was the last uh, row that i did and i finished it here and this is the bind off that i did i left a bit here so that i can sew the sides up for the arms so this is the final um, 10 stitch work that I done on the uh, using 10 pegs now you fold it along the longer side I think this is the longer side let me just check I fold it once you fold it this should be yeah 15 and a half the other side shouldn't give you 15 and a half and a half hmm, maybe not yeah this was the shorter side this was the 29 and this is the so this is the side that is the longer side now you fold it into half like this this is the fold here this part here is the fold from the fold you measure about seven inches down and mark it that will form your armhole okay Now you sew this part up, close it, so you can put your arm through this. The weather has become really so very, very hot. It's like 31 degrees, you know, it's like summer already. So, so hot here in Rome. I'm practically boiling. So, you know, working on this um, shrug was really... I hate working with wool when the weather is so hot. I will be stopping all the wool work, that's for sure. Hmm. Hmm. I had seemed to have put it on the wrong side. <laughs> anyway, what I wanted to show you is that um, you need to take the longer side and divide it into half because um, the 29 will go across your shoulder and down your arm whereas the 31 will form uh, how low it will go to on your back you know this one i've actually shown you how to do the shrug already it's on my uh, channel the mohair shrug you know now i didn't i'm doing this pattern again only because I couldn't think of anything else to do with this 10 stitch uh, thing i suppose you could make a poncho and other stuff if you're you know if you want to spend time and do something like that but because i had used this um, different colored yarn i thought it would look nice as a shrug you see which was why i decided to do that yeah this is the correct size now i'm i'm only doing seven inches because seven inches is enough for me for my arm I don't need anything uh, larger than that but if you happen to have larger arms then by all means um, use more uh, make the sleeve the opening for the sleeve larger so that your arms can go through 
I'm just gonna, you know, put a temporary lock on that. Do the same for this side. This thread has a bit of more hair in it, you know. No, 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 sorry, it has alpaca, not more hair. Some of the, you know, the pullover I did with the ruffle sleeve, the thread was exactly the same, except that one, the color was different. This one, that one had Prussian blue in it, you know. This one has navy blue on it, instead with beige. But they are the exact same type of thread. Okay, there. Now, this, once you've sewn it up, once you've sewn this part up, and you've got this, this is your sleeve, when you use it, it will open up like this, you know, and this part here, your arm will go here and here. And this is how the, the shrug will be worn, you know. Now, this will be the back of the shrug. It will look like this at the back on you. Okay? Anyway, now when you're doing the join for the sleeve, eh, make sure you use the mattress stitch because it must look as invisible as possible. The reason being that the sleeve, this part of the sleeve eh, where you have joined will be very visible because it will look, it will come up halfway between your shoulder and your underarm. It won't stay under the arm, you know. It will actually come all the way up in front of your um, shrug so it will form the front of your shrug you see so this um, part of the joint has to be completely invisible so try as much as possible firstly when you're joining like for instance here you see that the joint is where the colors are both more or less uh, beige like you know so don't go and start off using a very dark blue to join this part you see so when even though the thread is variegated try and pick the part of the thread that will match with both sides as they go up of course if the color this side is blue and this side is beige then it wouldn't matter so much um, but um, when you are faced with two colors that have almost the same tone the join also must match the two sides, okay? Now, um, this is quite important because, you know, uh, the final look of the shrug will depend greatly on how you finish it, you see. So try and add a little bit more care in what you do so that the final product will look quite nice. All right? Okay, then. I hope that this particular uh, shrug meets with your approval and happy looming